you know, much of our stock market is propped up by the big five tech companies whose business models are, are, well, not all of them, by the way, some of them, we should talk about the distinction. But uh, for those who optimize for maximizing attention and engagement, they call it engagement. Um, their business model is making sure they get more time spent, more usage and more engagement every year. And if it starts to go down, if they have to do and make choices that are about getting it to go back up. And that's the essence of, of our work. And what we've been saying is, is a massive problem and breaks the way that society works because to your original point, um, the deepest harm here, I think, is if you break shared reality, if you break the notion of our ability to see a same reality and have shared facts and shared understanding to, so we can coordinate what solutions we want. But in a business model of doing what's best for keeping you swiping, you, Nate Hagens, sitting there by yourself with your phone in your finger, I want you swiping the most. And so I'm going to show just not what makes everyone keep scrolling together to make that whole society work. I'm going to show what keeps Nate Hagen scrolling. And if that's doom scrolling on climate stuff and videos, you know, on oil and debt, then I'm going to show him that. But if it's for your, if it's for your daughter who, um, you know, might be, you know, swiping through anorexia videos because that tends to work best. And, and by the way, this is not deliberately done. What usually happens is someone starts swiping on dieting videos and food tips and healthy food. And then the algorithms are figuring out, well, what tends to work well for that cluster of users? And it turns out that the anorexia videos work really, really well. And the algorithms don't know what the word anorexia means. It doesn't know that those photos are good or bad. All it knows is that it works. And that's the same thing. So that's important because we do kind of uh, apply agency to these algorithms thinking that they're evil and trying to show us things. They're just following mathematical algorithms that optimize for clicks. So there is not a, a hidden brain there choosing to lead us down the dark path. That's right. It, it's just optimizing what our own behaviors default click to. Yes. That's right. A lot of people want to vilify the tech companies and the founders of those companies and the people that work there. But I promise you, they're not all growing mustaches and twirling them as the world burns. They're instead caught in this arms race. Now, there are decisions that they can make, and they have been denying the fundamental reality that their products are causing these effects. And for that, we should be uh, holding them accountable. Um, and there, there, I want to make sure I'm clear about that. There, there's definitely responsibility in the equation. But even if it weren't these set of founders, right, um, people have been very critical of Facebook and because of our and collective efforts, uh, you know, people are using some of their products a lot less. But now people are moving to TikTok and TikTok is doing just as much of the race to the bottom of the brainstem it just crossed, I believe, YouTube and maybe Facebook and time spent on Android. Um, so it's actually grown even more so. And that's because it's just a supercomputer pointed at your brain saying, what's the next video that's going to keep you swiping instead of saying, maybe I should do something else. And that supercomputer is trained on, you know, 2 billion users behavior. It figures out exactly what's kept users just like you swiping. And so it knows way more than you know yourself what will work. What we're saying then is that climate change and biodiversity loss uh, and other natural resource sink effects are the externalities downstream of the macro superorganism profit seeking market dominated exponential growth system and um, behaviors in especially teen women, polarization, addiction, lack of uh, attention span to do gardening because you're addicted to online games or playing Overwatch or watching TikTok videos. Those are the externalities of the digital infrastructure that our culture has developed. Yeah, that's right. I think that that is the digital fallout or what we used to call the climate change of culture, because much like we have an extractive energy economy whose externality is climate change and it occurs through what you've talked about, planetary overshoot, you know, the over extraction, over pollution, over depletion, uh, you know, past the kind of metabolizing capacities of the earth uh, in, in different ecosystems. We have to be specific about that. But in the same way, um, you know, you can have uh, certain amounts of polar personalization of content in society. But if you over extract, if you do overshoot on personalization, you break the shared, what Daniel Schmachtenberg calls the epistemic commons or the information ecology. These are fancy terms. We should just call it as our shared reality, our ability to make sense of the world together. 
And when was the last time we had a shared reality? Well, that's a great, that's a great point because it's, uh, we shouldn't do the classic garden of Eden naturalistic fallacy thing where we say, Hey, there was this pristine state of affairs where everybody viewed the world the same way, but we can talk about certain periods of history where in media, there was a smaller number of channels and there was a cost to that. You know, when we had Walter Cronkite, uh, we had, we didn't have an arms race on who could keep people's attention. And we didn't have a thousand Walter Cronkites who started realizing that the best way to keep their attention was to be, you know, Mr. Cronkite, uh, QAnon extreme and to pull people down into the Cronkite echo chamber that would, um, keep well, people yeah, going. We have tens of millions of Cronkites now. They all have their AM radio shows. Yeah, but they're not Cronkites because their incentives have been to figure out how do I inflame uh, your emotions to keep you coming back. And if I tell you that you're right, that's going to work a lot better than saying, well, actually that view you have, it's not that you're wrong. It's just that here's a more complex picture. The guy who's saying, well, here's nuance and complexity. They're going to get massively outcompeted by saying, here's a simple story and here's why you're right. 